Welcome back, everybody, to the A Sun Show post week nine. It's going to be a little bit different this week. We're going to be down uh, one, our usual uh, host with Judge, and then we don't actually have a guest either. So it's going to be me and Slow um, picking up the slack like the A Sun does for the rest of the league. Uh, just a little microcosm tonight. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so we'll get right into uh, week nine games. Uh, Slow, if you want to get started with the yes. game of the week. First game of the week. Game of the week, Mercer and Stetson. Stetson taking care of business, winning 36-29. Good game. Stetson a little bit uh, having to come back. Well, no. no. Mercer came back in the second half, and then Stetson finished it off in overtime. Um, Definitely close game. Great game by both of them. Um, Mercer just couldn't get enough going uh, on offense, it was like. So, yeah, great game. Great pick for game of the week. Uh, a little bit disappointing for Mercer. Yeah, this was this was a quite a, a back-and-forth game. I know there was a point where there's kind of two big momentum swings where Mercer got, got, got some steam, had his team going early, and then Stetson kind of came back uh, to the very end. He went to overtime kind of a um, unusual score, 36-29 for the final. Uh, two very different styles of play, too. Mercer generally likes to pass the ball a lot. Uh, and Stetson likes to ground and pound. Um, this game probably will be proven to be a, a kind of a, a big swing game um, in the eyes of the committee later on this year if these two teams are going to try to enter as at-large bids, which is the most likely scenario. So, um Big win for Stetson in the back on the map. Probably going to be ranked in the top 15 this week by the committee. Yeah. Uh, next game we have... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so Stetson beat the team that... Well, now 6-3 was 6-2. and two. Really good. Um, Mercer hasn't had quite the success in... Conference. Yeah, definitely a big rebound from uh, the Presbyterian. Yeah, yeah. Definitely needed that. Um, and Mercer not having as much success in conference as they had out of conference this year. Um, so I'm uh, not sure where exactly I'll play some, um, if he goes, if he can definitely get the eight wins this year, but I'm not sure, like, it'll be, it'll still be close getting, a, getting in, uh, the playoffs, if he does. Yeah, I saw from the wharf for 24, for today, uh, Princeton still had Mercer in the top 15, uh, which is a little bit. Curious, but hey, I'll take it. Any any, any ace sunclot we can we can get, I'll take. <laughs> yeah. So next next game we had uh, the FFCS game of the week, uh, Bethune Cookman and Kennesaw State. This has been circled on a lot of people's calendars for essentially the whole season. Um, one loss combined between the two. I guess two losses combined between the two teams. Uh, you got uh, number one in the country, Bethune Cookman, I believe, at number nine, uh, Kennesaw. State. State, number, sorry, number seven, Kennesaw State. Um, but the got, got out to a lead early, 10-3 at half, um, and then got out to an even bigger lead. I think it was 24-10 uh, in the third quarter, and the defense is pretty stifling. Um, held Kennesaw State's potent offense to under, under 200 yards, forced two interceptions, really dominated time possession battle. Um, you see 21 and a half minutes to, to judges, six and a half. Um, the game got interesting at the end, though. A judge returned a kick for a touchdown to cut the game to within seven points. And then on the next drive, I believe he forced a fumble, scoop and score to tie the game up uh, in the fourth quarter, which was huge because his offense could not get much going at all. Um, this was Pell's first game as an option team, which a lot of people took note of before the game started. Uh, Pell has been dominant all year, and uh, he chose a playbook that a lot of people view as dominant as well. So it was only fitting that um, Pell ended up winning this game kind of charged down the field, big fourth and five, fourth and seven conversion on his end of the field, picked up 20 yards on the last drive, just salted the game away, kicked field goal as time expired. Um, this is a brutal loss for, for Judge. I know he was hanging in there all game. This is, I know that the uh, the committee might look actually fondly upon this loss, if that's even possible. His a composite rose after this loss, uh, just for by, by nature of playing number one team in the country. Um, you know, taking your licks in this game, but Judge, no doubt, will be a playoff team, so will Pello. So um, this could potentially be a rematch in the playoffs, but tough loss for Judge. Um, Pello just continues his his otherworldly type season so far. Good ups for him. 
Yeah. Uh, both definitely both playoff teams. Just it was like that time of possession, just uh, maybe brutal. Like, yeah, just couldn't yeah. get anything going. Um, but a couple quick scores kept them in the game. Um, and those three turnovers definitely helped. I'm not sure exactly what he did with them, um, but anytime you can get that, but those an offense off the field helps. Um, but yeah, just that couldn't stop that running attack over 450 yards. And couldn't get anything going for himself, so it's a tough loss. Um, Judge, oh, Judge told us before this to tell everybody that he should have won. Um, he believes he should have had this game. Um, but yeah, it was a tough game. But then we've been able to uh, squeeze it out uh, right at the end. And yeah. Yeah, I think all things considered, Judge played a heck of a game. You know, statistically, if you look back on, on paper, he should have been destroyed. But uh, he hung in there, did everything he could to stay in there to the very end. Uh, just wasn't enough. Pillow was just over, overpowered him uh, by one drive's worth, it seemed. Yeah. But um, he'll be back. He'll bounce back. He's, he's, a, he's a coach. Yeah. And uh, he's, got a, he's got some good games out of him this season, too. Probably two more wins than he's in the top 15 in the playoffs. Maybe top ten, uh, depending on how yeah. everything else shakes out. But, but yeah, he's still yeah, I agree. he's still set up very well, uh, though almost essentially out of the conference championship game. Uh, Kansas State is not going to repeat as Don champions. Um, but yeah, he's still trucking towards the playoffs again this year. Oh yeah. Uh, next game is Jacksonville and Campbell, and Jacksonville beats another team in the A Sun. Another good team in the A Sun, um, getting his third win on the season, 34-31. Uh, getting it. <laughs> it was a uh, not very well played game. Four turnovers for each team. Well, not very well played on offense. They did. They got yards. And it's the points, but they also turned it over four times each. So, a little bit sloppy play. Uh, but Jacksonville State able to squeak it out with a three-point victory, get another win on the season. Uh, has he, I don't think he's officially been knocked out of a uh, championship game contention. Um, I think there's still a way for him to get in. So, that would be crazy if he did get in, though. I think, <laughs> I think Pedro is almost... Uh, wrapped it up at this point. I think one more win knocks me out and probably Mercer out. Um, and then another win would knock pretty much everybody else out. So it's it's gonna be tough for anybody besides Pelo to get the Don Championship. Uh, but uh, I think Jacksonville still technically has a chance. So that'll be fun. Uh, but tough loss for Campbell. I think I think three and two in conference this season. Yep. Yeah. So uh, mm-hmm. doing fine, just not enough to keep up with the rest uh, with the top of the A Sun and how good it's been. Yeah. 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 Purple continues to play spoiler to uh, to some of these Dawn teams, which not a lot of people probably saw coming given the very super hot start that this division got at the beginning of the year, did not expect to see purple uh, at second place overall in the division at three and six. Um, more, you know, what you had mentioned, how Pello, I think he, if he wins this week, he plays, I think he plays Stets. I oh, know he's sorry. He plays Jacksonville state. If he wins this week, I'm pretty sure he has, um, he has the division wrapped up. Although that is going to be a good game with him and Matt. I think if anybody has the, the chops to, to upset him this week, it's probably Matt. Um, especially after a big win over Chad this past week, but um, yeah, yeah, I mean, purple that purple's doing purple does right beats highly ranked <laughs> divisional <laughs> opponents somehow. Uh, I, I really do think that you know next season if he gets a, a more favorable out of conference schedule, he could be he could really make a, a run for um, for that division. So tough season so far, but he's shown flashes, shown flashes in the pan, uh, and I really do think he could turn the corner. Given a better, less brutal out of conference schedule. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so of, next, uh, but, uh, go ahead. Say, uh, okay, so Pillow wins this week. At six wins, he's definitely knocked out me and Mercer. Um, I think everybody else still technically has a chance. If the bet, like, if just Pillow won this week, it, everybody else would still take. Yeah, I, well, I, he has he has the head. Yeah, if he if he if he wins this week, uh, then he then Stetson is the only team that has a chance to knock him off because oh, he would have the head to head over uh, Jacksonville, KSU, and Campbell. Um, oh, but if he does lose this week, if he loses this week and next week to Stetson, then Stetson would be in the driver's seat for the division, which is kind of crazy. I thought. I thought. Oh no, I don't trust no, I think Stetson's week twelve for Bethune Cookman. I get. I gave Bethune Cookman week 11. So. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay, you, cause you got, you got Bethune Cookman next week? Yeah. I'm hoping Bethune Cookman loses this week because then I can. Uh, okay, I wanted it to be their first loss again this season, but if I want right. to technically have a mathematical chance at the playoffs, I need them to lose this week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's. Uh, it, it's, it's uh, I think anybody's still alive, but if Bethune Cookman gets another win, it knocks. Pretty, pretty much everybody else. else. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. This is gonna be a, this is gonna be a big week for both divisions. Yep. Uh, uh next next we got my game uh, versus East Tennessee State. This uh this has had to have been one of the more frustrating games uh, I've played as a coach, and and I totally you know it's tough because it's really hard to get on to uh you know get a couple of good plays thrown together. When the timing is kind of off, I know Nut has had a really crazy out of you know real life schedule with work and COVID and things going on at the hospital with with his work. So, um, you know, really appreciate what he's doing. And uh, you, you know, he he really <laughs> took me to the very end almost. Um, it was a one score game. Went down to the very you know we only got to about a minute four minute or sorry six minutes into the third quarter. Um, I ended up. We ended up. Every single play was was two clock to try to get the game over as quickly as we can. Um, I ended up winning on like a walk off, uh, r- rushing touchdown in the third quarter, and that ended up being enough to, to end the game. There's a there's a point where Tenney was the human ref at the very end. Um, I could get anything going on offense. Fifty five total yards through almost three quarters. Um, it was he, he played a great game on defense. He just had. I felt like I think up until up until about a minute left in the first half, I had only had the ball for about thirty seconds the entire game, uh, which is kind of insane. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was really really frustrating game to play as a as a coach, especially when the when the, the timing is so sporadic. But I'm glad to walk away with a win. You know, Nut is had quite the up and down season more mostly down recently but um i think given a more regular schedule and opportunity to play this game nut can be can be a really great coach it's just um things haven't really gone his way this year and uh i think given some more time he'll hope he'll be a more tenured and more experienced coach yeah we saw at the beginning of the season he can be a good coach just he needs time to think and it doesn't sound like he's getting that time now right now yeah um and yeah, it's not like not many plays were run, and not much was on offense for either of you. It was wasn't nothing was clicking this game. Uh, if that only fifty-five yards through three quarters, that is crazy. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. If if that had can, if somehow that had continued. And not have won the game. That would definitely that'd probably be the most impressive. Sunny D. Um, he might have been able to get Sunny D if he, even if he lost. Like, <laughs> like if that if if that continued and you guys finished the game, that would be like under a hundred yards. Oh yeah, like, well under hundred yards. So yeah, oh yeah. Even oh, with yeah. the loss, that would it would definitely be a contender for. That would Sunny have been D. impressive. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> Just very glad to walk away from that unscathed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, glad you got the win. Uh, keeps you atop the north for now. Um, I hope Nut can get his first win in conference this week. I think it's him and Alabama State this week. A little bit of team. Yep. Uh, so one of them has to get their first win in conference this week. One of them has to win. <laughs> uh, 
so it'll be that'll be probably some a one that we'll keep an eye on, but it doesn't have a ton of effect on the rest of the division. Uh, so I think they're both out out of the playoffs right now. Yep. Uh, or out of the conference championship game. Yeah. Uh, so. But yeah, good win for you. Uh, good to escape with a win when you really needed one, especially with another game will that happened uh, that we'll get to in a couple minutes. Uh, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That. Next game is Chattanooga and Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State rolling over Chattano- Chattanooga 48 20. Um, the return of Matt. Uh, he got. We don't know what was ha- happening the uh, past couple weeks, but he is. He returned this week to ruin Chatty's day or week. Uh, <laughs> I know so many times Chatty was complaining about not being able to get anything going. Um, it looks like he did okay on offense. Someone guess it just he wasn't able to. He kept getting stopped or something like that. At, uh, like get some yards and then get stopped before field goal range or whatever. Um, but yeah, Matt just cruised through Chattanooga. Um, he is now. Third in the dusk, still has a chance. Um, technically, it's not a great one. He needs some help, um, but he's keeping himself alive. He didn't have a great out of conference, so if he wants to have a good season this season, he needs to finish off strong, get a lot, get a couple more wins. Um, but it's good to see classic Matt back in the A Sun. Yeah, this is a game that uh, actually I think all three of us or all four of us got wrong on the pick em last week. Um, we all predicted Chatty to win. We all kind of thought that Matt was beginning his downward slide, or I guess continuing his downward slide. Um, but it just goes to show you can't ever really count him out. You know, good coaches are, are always going to hang around regardless of, this, of the circumstances. Um, kind of blowing Chatty out here up, you know, by four, by, by four scores. I don't think anybody was really expecting that, considering Chatty was going to this game ranked. Um, Matt is still in. Matt is still in the race. Uh, depending on what happens this week with me and and Wally, um, he still very much has an opportunity to uh, to to get a division championship win here. Um, I know he plays Pella this week, though, so he definitely has his hands full if he wants to stay in the race. Definitely has to win out and get some help from in front of him. But um, I'm excited for Matt. I know it's not the season that turned out the way that he wanted to, but I'm glad that. He's got a couple wins under his belt um, to save some face because I know he, he's a, he's a you know one of the top sixteen best coaches in the league after you know his advantage in the second round last year in the playoffs. So he uh, he'll get it, he'll get he'll get get it going again. I don't know if it's going to be this season, but um, he really has a chance to spoil uh, uh, <laughs> Pelo's season this coming up week if he can get a win. And I know the other teams in the Donwood would be very appreciative of that. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, Good win for Matt. Tough win for Chat. Tough loss for Chatty. I know that was a game that he kind of needed if he wanted to stay in an at-large bid. In the playoffs still need some help there. Can still finish season eight and four, um, but it's going to need some help from the committee if he wants to get in. So yeah. tough loss for Chatty. I'm not quite sure how his out of conference schedule works. But how the out of conference schedule went. So it'll be it'll probably be a close one um, if he finishes eight and four. It, yeah, yeah. Just sneaks in or first four out, I'll bet. Um, it'll be a, it'll be he'll be right on the edge, whether in or out. I don't know. Um, yeah, he said some he said some good out of conference wins. I think he he beat Villanova, he beat Charleston Southern, and then he beat Houston Baptist, and then he beat North Carolina A and T. Um, but that Villanova win's looking better and better. And depending on what CSU can do with Furman and the CFC. Um, I could be. I could end up being a, a, a resume defining win. So um, one that he'll need coming into the playoffs. Uh, next this week we had uh, Sanford versus Northern Alabama. If you watched the show last week, you knew that I was really rooting for Sanford here because I got to play UNA for the division championship this week. Um, yeah, well, I mean, what can I say? This game was a slugfest in every sense of the term. Only one off, only one touchdown scored in the entire game, I do believe. Um, I think, I, I believe um, UNA had 
five field goals. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Let me see. Let me confirm that. Yeah, yeah. So he ended up with five field goals, um, and then it being enough for him. The touchdown that Sanford scored is actually a scoop and score in the first half. Uh, so no offensive touchdowns in this game. Um, what can I say? I mean, you know, Wally has found ways to win, and that's all you really need to do as a coach in this game is just find ways to get make sure that that game is a W on your on your schedule. Um, Sanford was looking to make a turn after a pretty big win versus Davidson last week. Not exactly the way they wanted to get started. You know, four and four kind of on the cusp. But a win here would have been big and um, probably vaults in the back of the bubble picture. Um, now four and five on the outside looking in. Really need some things to go their way in order to um, to get an at-large bid. I'm not totally sure if that's going to work. Um, on the other hand, Northern Alabama, you know, looking great. Like I said, doing what they need to do. Um, getting a win with only 138 yards on offense. Um, and, you know, dominated time of possession, you know. He he does it unconventionally, but he he makes it work well, that while he does. So um, not looking forward to playing him this week, but uh, I'm gonna have to do what I have to do if I want to want to hang with the big dogs. Um, so yeah, great win, great great defensive performance by Wally too, holding Sanford a, a prolific offense from the beginning of the year, 224 yards total, forced two fumbles, uh, really destroyed the time possession battle too. So uh, big win for Wally. Um, really excited for him moving forward. Yeah, uh, North Alabama looked a lot like Kennesaw State last season. Uh, tough opening, but it yeah, is definitely, rolling definitely. through For- conference play. Uh, North Alabama only went one and three out of the conference, but they've been um, taking people off one by one in the A-Sun. So it's going to be tough. For, uh, it's going to be a good game next week. Um Definitely, while Jacksonville State still has a chance in the division, this definitely seems like it's going to be the uh, division championship game. Um, especially if uh, you win, then it's pretty much locked. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a great game for North Alabama. Uh, not much offense, but two good defenses. And North Alabama was able to squeak it out. Getting those two turnovers probably helped. And, yeah, it's a good win for him. Keep it up. Uh, next game is <laughs> my triple overtime game against Alabama State. Look at all the corners. <laughs> okay, this was a fun one. Um, I opened it up 14 nothing. Had Turk complaining about him not liking going against me because I beat him 31-7 last season. Um, <laughs> so it looks like it was open in the same way. And then he roared back 18 straight points. Uh, he, he drove down the field, got a field goal. And then I fumbled the kickoff, of course. And he got a touchdown. And then the two-point conversion, so that was 14-11. Then I fumbled another kickoff, back-to-back kickoff. Um, oh wow! And he scores another touchdown, making that 18-14. Um, I managed to make it 18-17 before the end of the half, and we each scored a touchdown in the third. Um, but and then I was able to tie it back up at uh, right before, uh, right before. No, I got ahead right before the end of the game. I was up by seven. Um, I think I I was able to score, tie it up, stop him real quick, and then score again pretty fast, like under two minutes or whatever. And he had – I kicked it off. I think I squib kicked it, and he had one second. I think I – oh, no. What did I do? I think I went with one. One second, I went with number one. And, of course, that's what he went with as well. So he got the zero to touchdown and an extra point. So then we're in overtime. Wow. <laughs> um, I won the toss and went offense first. <laughs> I won the toss and went offense first. And I ended up going backwards. And it was like fourth and 22. And like a 54-yarder. And I decided not to check the ranges. I was like, no, I'm pretty sure it's just super hard, so I'm going to go for the touchdown. 
Um, and yeah, I didn't get anywhere close to getting the first down. <laughs> um, but I would have made the field goal. So yeah. <laughs> um, ended up then, working out anyways. Yeah, I managed to get turnover. Um, so go to the second overtime. He scores, and then I was able to score right back. Um, decided to just take the extra point, and I had to go to uh, triple OT instead of trying to win it there. And in triple OT, I scored first and got a two-point conversion, and then he scored, but he didn't get a two-point conversion. So, good game. Um, bunch of turnovers, for, especially for me. But I was able to get... Was able to move the ball a lot, um, and just barely won a time of possession. Um, but yeah, I got the offense going. Um, got uh, 545 yards, split it up pretty somewhat evenly, kind of. Um, I never did as many rushing yards as I did passing yards, so that's somewhat even for me. Um, but yeah, good game. That was a fun one. But I don't think I want another Triple OT game anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you played Pillow last year in Week Nine as well, right? Yes. And that went to yeah. So you, d- yeah. So you're 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 just you just have a knack for for finding multi OT <laughs> games in Week Nine. <laughs> so next 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 year you're gonna go to a quadruple or yeah quadruple overtime with like like jet with purple or something in Week Nine. That's gonna be crazy. <laughs> Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, this is a big win. I know this is one that you were that you were really looking for. Um, this is one that you know try to get back on track. One that you know kept you alive in the division, um, I believe. So um, yeah, no, excellent win. You know, and as a, as somebody who was watching the game, it was it was a lot of fun to watch. So it's it's always fun when when you get some entertainment value out of it, and when folks are watching, um, you know, back and forth, high scoring games. You know, zero diffs is. is <laughs> <laughs> makes you makes your jaw drop a little bit. It's a lot of fun. I know it's maddening when you're playing, but uh, it's a lot of fun to watch. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, excellent win. I dropped four in a row, and I got delayed game yep. win last season. So getting an actual win this this uh, session week, whatever, um, <laughs> whatever the dang thing's called, <laughs> uh, it feels good. And I got three games left. I can get myself up to eight and four. Um, I think I, that would include a win over Palo in the last three weeks. Um, it's I've already forgotten who I'm going against this week. That's bad. Uh, <laughs> I got <laughs> someone this week, then in Palo, then in Purple. Um, so it's going to be tough to get to that eight wins, but I still think I have a chance for the playoffs. Uh, at our, yeah, in that large bit, if I can wrap the season up with uh, on a win streak. Yeah, yeah, that that the the hope is still there. Hope is still alive. Um, yeah, really glad to see you get back on track. With you know, it's no it's no easy feat dropping 540 yards on offense. So I, I think you I think you really deserve that one, regardless of all the zero diffs and all the <laughs> the crazy kickoffs. Uh, your offense really showed out here, and I, I think that that's really what kept you in the game. So that, that that's really awesome. Yeah. Okay, so we can move into the. Uh, the standings. Uh, I'll take the dusk if you want to take the dawn. Um, I'll start at the top. So uh, in the dusk, you have uh, myself, Alabama and M, top seed, five and zero in the game conference. And then UNA four and one in conference, and then Jacksonville at th- Jacksonville State at three and two. Um, I do play UNA this coming week. That looks to be um, potentially division clinching. If not, it's going to make for some really <laughs> craziness. Um, in the last couple weeks of the season, um, if I end up, if if, uh, if Wally ends up winning that game, then you got two teams at one and four with Chatty and Sanford, and then two teams at zero oh and five uh, with ETSU and Turk at Alabama State. Yeah, and in the dawn we have Bethune Cookman at one, of course, um, five no and nine no. Then we got Jacksonville at two, Kennesaw State at three, Campbell at four, and Stetson at five. All at three and two. <laughs> <laughs> All piled up there. And then Mercer and Fort A&M down at the bottom at two and three apiece. Uh, it's 
still type 1, everyone's still alive, technically. Uh, me and Mercer need a lot of help, everybody else needs a little bit of help, except with the Nicholas Quinn, who basically just needs to win one more game. Um, so yeah, it's uh, starting to it's starting to clear up a little bit, especially, especially if Halo wins this week. Um, but it's still all cluttered up, and you don't know. I could end up in second. I uh, Jacksonville could end up in last, or Campbell could second, or Mercer could second. Like it, you don't. Two through seven is all piled up, and you have no clue who's going to go where. Uh, so it's it's still all crazy in the dawn. I think I think at first for any movement this week, it's got to start with the with the Jacksonville State upset over Pillow. Um, that would really get things moving around, and because then you get into multiple tiebreakers because you got what, four teams at three and two um, with Stetson playing with New Cookman in week twelve, and, and you playing with New Cookman next week. So really, really, I'm pulling for chaos over here. I want Jacksonville <laughs> State to get a win over with New Cookman this week, and and just see exactly what what can happen. I know, but you know, Pelo started really strong last year and did not so strong. So let's see if we can get a little bit of a slide and, see, and just kind of see what happens. You know, <laughs> Matt is going to be the lead hero this week. Um, everybody's going to be cheering, yeah. everybody's gonna be cheering for Matt. No way going to be on. No way going to be on Pelo's side. Partially because he's nine and zero, and partially because <laughs> yeah, everybody in the whole league is going to be cheering for Matt. All we want to see is chaos. So uh, everybody, everybody <laughs> cheering for Matt this week. Matt can keep Matt can keep himself alive if you lose and he wins, and he can keep everybody in the dawn alive if the team loses. <laughs> so, I love it. The sorry, Pedro, but the whole FC, the FCS is against you this week, so have fun. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> moving to power rankings. Yep. Yep. We got a uh, not very good graphic because um, we forgot to ask, ask Judge about it. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so top seven. We got Bethune Cookman at one, unanimous number one. Uh, then Alabama AM, Kennesaw State, Stetson, Mercer, North Alabama, and Campbell. Uh, North Alabama. Only five and four, but the work he's been doing in conference has gotten everybody to respect him and move him up into the top seven. In the bottom seven, you got uh, Chatty at eight, Florida A&M at nine, um, Jacksonville at ten, Jacksonville State at eleven, uh, Sanford at twelve, Turk and Alabama State at thirteen, and uh, you have ETSU rounding out the list at number fourteen. Uh, um, this is pretty close to to my list, actually. Let me pull it up for you. Um, this was decently close, I believe. I think the only thing that I, I don't I don't think I had UNA that high. I think I had Campbell above UNA, um, and then I think I had you. I had Florida A M over Chatty, so I had Florida A M at eight, um, and I might have had Jacksonville State over JU. I'm not totally certain, but that win last week was actually pretty big. So, but yeah, this is more or less the same. Um, I was actually surprised. I didn't. I, actually, I also didn't have. I had Kennesaw State above me at number two, and myself at number three. Uh, obviously, it was you know one vote difference, very close. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I had a couple differences there. But what about you? I don't actually remember doing it this week, so that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I. Um, yeah, I don't remember doing it this week. Um, it looks pretty much what I would do. Um, I don't see any big disagreements. Um, I know that standing, so it's usually what I go off of anyway. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I... That's probably what I would do as well. Um, it, I have no clue. If I, I might have you and Judge switched. I'm not sure. And it looks like it went back and forth on everybody's ballot with how close you two are in points. Um, so I don't know which one I would rank first. Probably using you to win this week. Um, 
but yeah, that's pretty much how I have it. Stetson above Mercer because Stetson just beat Mercer. Um, and then we got a bunch of five and four teams with six through nine. And I think that's pretty much how I'd order it. Um, North Alabama gets first one just because they've been on a win streak, um, especially in conference. Then Campbell, uh, just because he's out of the remaining three, he's done the best in conference. And then I guess me, uh, well, I might do me and then Chatty just because I have better in conference and we're the same overall. But it can go either way. I don't really care. And then the rest is looks the same. So yeah, I'll have to remember to actually do it next week. Whoops. Um, but yeah, you, you look pretty good. Uh, voters got it right this week. And moving right along um, to the Ace on Player of the Week. No graphic this uh, this week for a Player of the Week, but doesn't mean that it means any less. Uh, player of the Week is RB2 at Bethune Cookman. Um, I'm going to mess up his name. It's Yoga Hollis. Uh, 16 carries, 248 yards, two touchdowns. He's the more of the third down change of pace back at Bethune Cookman. Um, two massive touchdowns. First KSU as the starting guy, Alfie, what's his name? Alfie Goodman, something like that. Um, couldn't get it going. Um, but, uh, you know, like I said, Pella finds different ways to move the ball around and score. So, not really surprised here. Just another one of the weapons at Pella's disposal. Um, so, great, great performance by Mr. Hollis. And uh, Sonny D uh, wasn't necessarily voted um, on the ASUN this week due to some logistical errors, but. Um, it was voted upon by the two hosts of the show. So uh, we take uh, presiding veto factor, and uh, we both, we both uh, voted for UNA this week after a pretty stellar performance versus a, um, a good Sanford offense, holding seven points, 120 yards uh, for the Bulldogs on offense, forcing two turnovers to zero offensive touchdowns. I think, I guess the touchdown was a defensive scoop and score for Sanford, so... Zero points live for that defense. Excellent game all around by uh, by the Lions defense. Yeah, it was a pretty easy choice this week. Uh, the net, it, since we're excluding you and ETSU because you guys didn't make it, didn't finish the game. Um, right. The next, right. the next lowest scoring person was Chatty, who sco- still scored twenty points on Jacksonville State. We had a ton of shootouts right. this week. Um, most of them were close games. Um, yeah, all of them were close games. None of nothing was over seven points. <laughs> uh, well, Jacksonville County was twenty-eight, and then everything else was seven or less. Uh, so, a lot of shootouts and a lot of close games this week in the eighth one. But North Alabama's defense showed up this week, and so they get sunny D. Yeah, I'm glad to get. I'm glad to get Wally on the. He's been flying a little bit under the radar, even in a sun circles. So glad to see um, him get recognized for for a good performance there. Um, And I'm really nervous to have to play against that defense this week. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And then moving into the the best performances of the season. And now you get to go. Yeah. Uh. I know. I'm I'm getting him right at the exact wrong time that I want to play. Um, so great time to determine the division. Uh, very, very nervous, obviously. Um, so yeah, so we can get into, uh, looks like we're going to pick them for next week. Um, before we get started, I will say, uh, I had an absolutely atrocious week, uh, last week in pick them. I was one for six. Ooh. Everyone else was s- slow judge and, and the guests were, uh, were four and two. The only pick that I got right was was Slow's game. Every other game I got wrong. <laughs> um, so uh, the record the records are actually a lot closer now. Um, I'm at 51 and 31. Slow's at 46 and 35. Judge's at 49 32. Uh, and the guest is 52 31. So the guest has overtaken me for most a uh, number of most correctly picked games. Um, so it's going to get spicy in the last couple weeks as far as the pick 'em goes for the season. So uh, shop on your seatbelts. It's going to be it's gonna 
Sadly, the guest is going to be tight. Sadly, the guest is going to be behind now because we don't have one this week. <laughs> Serves them right. No, the week they take me over for first, it's about time. They, they take, take a seat back as long as I don't go 0 6 this week. <laughs> All right. Right. Uh, so we'll start at the top. Um, we'll start with my game alphabetically. Um, I'm going to abstain from this from this selection. But as everybody probably knows at this point, this is for this has division champion written all over it. Um, if if Wally does win, it gets a little crazy uh, with the tiebreakers and, and and Matt still at JSU is still kind of being in the picture. Um, but this game, I believe, is the game of the week voted upon by uh, the other coaches in the A Sun. Um, first time playing Wally. We both have had pretty different paths this season, but more, you know, both in control of our own destiny at this point. Uh, kind of nervous to play him. I know he's a, he's pretty big in MLR, but I'm um, excited to to play UNA for the first time and, and again, get, you know, have another Bama Belt game on the line. Yeah. Um, so if you win, you basically locked up the dusk. Um, get a return trip to the conference championship game. But if the North Alabama wins, they have Jacksonville State next week. Um, so they get – they have the two people who can't, are still contending for the division back-to-back. Um, so even if North Alabama wins this week, it'll just mean he has tiebreaker over you. You guys will still be tied in the division, so he still has to win out basically. Especially if you win out, he has to win out. Uh, so right. still anybody's guess. Um, <laughs> let's see. So he had, after the game, he had Jacksonville State and Kennesaw State. <laughs> well, you have, <laughs> well, you have Stetson and Alabama State. Um, so we're going to have some... If... If... Um, if Wally wins, we're going to have some great... We're all a great fight in the last three weeks. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know who's going to win. Um, you're both on a roll. Um, you won seven in a row, I think. While he's on like a three or four game winning streak, at least. Yep, um, four. Four, okay. Oh, yeah, he was one in four earlier in the season. <laughs> um... I think I'm going to go with you. I think you're going to keep it rolling. It's a tough one. I think it's going to be... I think only one of you is going to hit 20 points, and it's going to be... Because I said it's a seven-point game. It's going to be like 2017 or something like that. Uh, but I'm going to have... I got you winning this game. All right. First team to 20 wins. All right. I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous, but uh, it'll be... It'll be a good game. I agree. We're both we're both pretty defensive minded coaches. So uh, if any, yeah, if either team gets over twenty points, it's it's pretty likely that that team is going to win. Um, so it's going to be a good one. Next, we have a, uh, an aforementioned game already. We had uh, each. And this past week, um, I'm not completely in, in, in looking at his performances over the past three or four weeks. I'm not totally convinced that um, that Nut will actually play a full game. Um, that being said, uh, I think I think Turk has had a couple games in conference slip away from him this year, and because of that, I, I'm going to go I'm going to go Turk and Alabama State. Um, I think. Turk's in better form right now, even though he lost a, a heartbreaker to you last week. I think he's in better form. He, he, he's he's running on all cylinders, even your game. He got his plays go his way. Um, I think that happens again this week, either, you know, scoop and score, turnover, touchdown, touch team, touchdown, um, something like that. That'll be the difference in this game. Okay. Um, yeah, it's going to be a tough one. Um I don't know. Uh, I think I'm going to Turk as well. Um, they, I've gone against both of them this season. 
they both put up pretty good fights. Um, but a th- triple OT game is still like it. It is the last play. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, I will go Turk. Um, think he's gonna be looking to redeem himself after. Uh, not like it wasn't an embarrassing loss. It was just a tough loss. Um, a little bit of heartbreaker. So he's gonna want to get back, get back on top. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go Turk as well. Um, it's a lot easier to get brooms out than the two of us. Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I guess we're sleeping this one, uh, Turk. Next we have uh, a preseason highly touted game Jacksonville State versus Bethune Cookman. Um, Bethune Cookman obviously nine or no. Jacksonville State four or five. Uh, season didn't really go the way they had planned, but uh, nonetheless, two uh, playoff coaches from last season. Um, man, you know, I, Pelu, you know, the, clo- the score was close last game with him and Kennesaw State, but I think he had the game pretty much in hand the entire time. Um, and I'm not totally sure where Matt is at as far as, you know, his confidence in this game. I, I think Pell is too much. Um, he has just been, you know, very uh, f- similar to in real life LSU of this past year, just unstoppable on offense, making defensive plays when he has to. Um, it, it's just it's just been a, it's fun to watch him. So um, give me Pello in this game. I think he wins by 10. Um. I know picking in my own self-interest has not worked, like, at all this season. But I'm going to do it again and pick Matt. <laughs> Ooh. I will I just try and speak it into existence. Um, because I need Manifest Matt. Manifest it, baby. I need Matt to win. Um, so I'll be rooting for Matt. I'm going to be picking Matt here. I'm either going to win twice or lose twice this week. Uh <laughs> Stay alive and get the pick right, or lose the division and get the pick wrong. Uh, so yeah, I'm going with Matt this week, uh, purely for self-interest. Uh, and then looks like my game is next, so I'll give a little preview of that. Um, I'm up against Campbell, um, so. Should be a good game. Uh, me and him are fighting over who is the most average coach in the league. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's always had that title, but I have the record to back it up. Um, I was until before this past week, I was uh, four and four on the season uh, and eleven and eleven all time. So um, yeah, it, we're fighting over who's the most average coach. And also both fighting to try and stay in the hunt for the playoffs because if either of us lose, we're out of the playoffs. So that being said, well, what was so? Be, let's. Uh, I actually don't remember the the final from last season. Did you guys play last season? No, because no, Campbell was in the north then. Oh, uh, that's so right. So this is y'all's first time playing. Yeah. Hmm. This, yeah, this is going to be a really close game. I and I, I think that there's going to be a handful of turnovers on both sides of the, of the ball. Um, I just think I'm I'm, I'm going to go Campbell here, but I think it's going to be a final 28-27, uh, you know, 21-20, something like that. Um, super close. It might come down to like a missed field goal or missed extra point. This is going to be really tight, but um, it really could go either way. And if I was forced to pick, I might go Campbell. Um, even though Campbell is kind of stumbling after this loss to JU this past week, and you're, you know, flying high after a really big triple overtime win, um, I'm going to pick Campbell, but it's it's going to be really close. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So next, we'll go right into the next game. Um, this is Chatty versus Samford. Um, this is a battle for. Some bragging rights in the Dust Division. Both teams are one and four in conference. Um, you know, both you know, Chatty's still trying to look the claws way back into an at-large bid potentially. Uh, Sanford four and five, a little more work to do. Needs a, little, a couple things to happen in front of him. Um, 
man, you know, what, what do you say? I, I, I picked Chatty last week to beat Matt. He kind of came around and bit me. Um, I'm going to pick Chatty again this week, but I'm a little more tentative. I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm just a little more confident in Chatty's inconsistency than I am in Sanford's inconsistency. Um, I think Chatty can turn it on and uh, start slinging the ball around a little bit, making some plays on defense. So um, I'm going to take, take Chatty here. Still not super sure about it. Give me Chatty. Um, I think, I think I'm going to go Chatty, Chatty as well. I just think Chatty, uh, Chatty has more to play for. Um, he still plenty of chance to get. He was just ranked this past week, so he still has plenty of shot to get into the playoffs. Uh, so I think he's going to be determined to because five losses is not going to get you into the playoffs, especially this season, and with especially with how the A Sun is going. Uh, that would be like the sixth or seventh A-Sun team, which I don't think is happening. So, um, five losses isn't going to get you in. So I think Chatty is going to be playing as hard as he can. And I think he's going to get a, like, six to ten point win, somewhere, somewhere around there. Um, I think it'll be a good win for Chatty. Keep him up alive. Another sweep there. Um, next, we have Stetson versus Jacksonville. This is a bit of, conf- of a confounding game for me because Jacksonville has had notoriety all season for beating Campbell, beating Kennesaw State, you know, beating teams um, that he necessarily hasn't been, uh, you know, poised to beat um, UNA as well. Um, but I, I just think that. Stetson, when they're when their offense is clicking, when they're rolling, they're one of the hardest offenses to stop in the entire country once they get the ball that option. Um, and I think that happens this week. I think Stetson got a little bit of a fire under her belly, um, you know, last week with the win over Mercer. Uh, I think it kind of continues here. Um, I think Purple falls a little bit from the second place um, perch that he's in in the, in the division. And uh, I think Stetson wins here. Um, Stetson wins by, by a touchdown. Um, well, Purple has been a giant killer all season, so I'm going to go Purple. Um, a little bit self-interest as well, again, so probably bite me in the butt like it's all season, but I won't do it anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to go Purple, giant kicker, kicker, giant killer all season, uh, so I think he keeps it up, um, should be a fun game, uh, so... Yeah, I'm going to go Jacksonville. Uh, Fins up. The hype train. <laughs> Hell yeah. And then last but not least um, is a game that's pretty underrated so far, I think, this week, um, which, which is Kennesaw State versus Mercer. Um, probably going to be a top 25 game, depending on how the committee used Mercer's loss this past week. I think they're going to see it in good standing, keep them in the top 25. Um Man, what can I say? You know, this this game last year was determined was the game that got Judge into the conference championship game, um, kind of sealed his his amazing regular season. Uh, he dropped, I think he dropped sixty points on Mercer. I think we're going to see some more of that this year. Um, but both teams are going to drop probably fifty plus. I think. I think whatever the over under is, you got to go in the over this game. Um, I think Kennesaw State wins it, but I think it's going to be high flying. It's going to be similar to Florida and M Alabama State game we saw this past week. Uh, where you know, got might this game might go into overtime. Might see some 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 craziness, uh, some free football. Um, but I think Judge's offense is too balanced. A bit of a t- tune-up game. Got you know, got his mind right after this after the close loss to Pelo. Uh, I feel like it gives him some confidence that he can really beat anybody in the country. Um, and I, and I think he he walks into to Mercer and uh, and gets a dub. Yeah, it's a really close one, and I'm almost certain it's going to be a top 25 matchup. I don't think you drop from 11 to out of the top 25, especially when your boss is to Stetson, um, who is now 6-3 as well. So um, it's not a bad loss. It's just a tough loss. So I think Mercer will probably be in the 18-20 to 20 range, maybe a little lower, but not too much. Um 
So it's going to be a great game. Um, I can see it going either way. Uh, I kind of want to keep going on the Mercer underrated thing I was doing earlier in the season and pick Mercer again. But I think Judge has got this game. I think he's going to be... He's not technically out of the division yet, and he's going to be determined to keep himself in it. Get it. Try and get the back-to-back division titles. Um, so, it's going to be a tough one. It's going to be close. I could see a lot of points. I don't know if it's going to hit the 50s, but I, could, I think they'll both hit the 40s. Um, like, I don't know, 49, 42, 49, 45, something like that. Uh, so, but I got Judge taking this one. Yeah, that's that's definitely going to be a, a game to watch because um, that, that game could have some national implications too. If Mercer pulls off an upset, suddenly he's <laughs> right back in the both right back in the top three. 15. Yeah, they're both 7-3 yeah, and, three and be... probably top 15. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to guess Kennesaw State would be 10 this week or something about, somewhere around there. At 7-2, yep. uh, probably around 10. And then both of them at seven and three, I guess they'd both be in the 11 to 15 range with Mercer being a little higher. I guess that's the how the rest of the league is. I guess you can also say being outside top 15, but not too far outside. Like 16 or 17. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all we had this week. Um, a bit of a, a different setup without our guest and without a without our host. Um, but thank you guys for joining us. Uh, thank you, Slow, for, for taking the time. And uh, hopefully, I get more picks right this week. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck out there, like folks. More, awesome, guys. I like to get more picks right in general. <laughs> I think I'm still the worst at it. Uh, it's know. it's much closer now. It's within six games. Ooh. You can really go either way. Yeah, we still got. Uh, 14 w- games after this week, plus the conference championship game. We'll see if we do playoff games. I don't know. I, I don't think we really did playoff shows last season. Uh, I forget. Every, if... Everybody got knocked out by the second round. <laughs> we did or not, to be honest. Uh, I think everybody got knocked yeah. out by the second round, so we didn't really do it. Um, but yeah, it will still be close one for pickums. And close one in general for the Hawaii Sun. So excited to see how it turns out. We're going to embrace the chaos, man. Chaos. Chaos. Matt, 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 <laughs> Matt. <laughs> All right. Thanks, folks. See you guys in two, see you guys. two weeks. See you.